With more than 1 million buildings amassing nearly 1.7 trillion pounds, the pressure from New York City's massive buildings and skyscrapers is sinking the city at a rate of 1 to 2 millimeters a year. Combine this with rising sea levels, and it has garnered enough attention that the Army Corps of Engineers is actively exploring solutions to the growing problem. The downward pressure, however, is not the only threat New York's coastline is facing. First published in the journal Earth's Future, a paper titled The Weight of New York City, Possible Contributions to Subsidence from Anthropogenic Sources, details a complex modeling and screening process to calculate a previously unquantified contribution to subsidence from the cumulative mass and downward pressure exerted by the built environment of the city. This paper is the work of three University of Rhode Island oceanologists and a researcher from the U.S. Geological Survey, who collaborated to publish these findings. The scholars first estimated the cumulative weight of New York's buildings to be 1.68 trillion pounds, then calculated the downward pressure these buildings exert on a mixture of clay, sand, and slit that make up most of the ground beneath the city streets. Based on their model, New York experiences a subsidence rate, which is the technical term for sinking, of about 1 to 2 millimeters per year on average. The lower Manhattan, as well as particular areas of Brooklyn and Queens, show a propensity for greater subsidence risk. As the authors note in their paper, much of lower Manhattan is currently no more than 1 to 2 meters above sea level. While 1 to 2 millimeters per year may not seem that much, it's the width of a nickel, the study's authors warn that this amount is more than enough to cause major coastal cities serious problems in the future. The deeply concentrated population of 8.4 million people faces varying degrees of hazard from inundation in New York City. Two recent hurricanes caused casualties and heavy damage in New York City, and in 2012, Hurricane Sandy forced seawater into the city, whereas heavy rainfall from Hurricane Ida in 2021 overwhelmed drainage systems because of heavy runoff within the mostly paved city. The combination of tectonic and anthropogenic subsidence, sea level rise, and increasing hurricane intensity imply an accelerating problem along coastal and riverfront areas. Repeated exposure of building foundations to salt water can corrode reinforcing steel and chemically weaken concrete, causing structural weakening. Projected sea level rise poses a clear threat to coastal cities, with an expected increase of 200 to 600 millimeters by 2050 worldwide. Globally, populations who live in subsiding cities will face rising seas at rates of up to four times faster than stable regions. Urban subsidence may be caused by groundwater withdrawal, natural ground compaction, tectonic effects, rerouting of normal sediment accumulation, and the weight of cities themselves. Combined with research, which suggests that greenhouse gas could play a role in increasing the frequency of hurricanes, they state that greenhouse gas forcing appears to be reducing the natural wind shear barrier along the U.S. East Coast, which will allow more frequent, high-intensity hurricane events in the coming decades, as well as the fact that the threat of sea level rise is three to four times higher along the Atlantic coast of North America. This subsidence plays a small but meaningful role in a bigger, more dire picture. New York City is ranked third in the world in terms of future exposed assets to coastal flooding. 90% of the 67,000 structures in the expanded post-Hurricane Sandy flood risk areas have not been built to floodplain standards. In the researchers' own plain language summary, they write, As coastal cities grow globally, the combination of construction densification and sea level rise imply increasing inundation hazard. The point of the paper is to raise awareness that every additional high-rise building constructed at coastal, river, or lakefront settings could contribute to future flood risk, and that mitigation strategies may need to be included. The subsidence mapping concept helps to quantify the hazard and add specifically to soil types and conditions. We present satellite data that show the city is sinking at a rate of 1 to 2 millimeters a year. It is well understood that individual buildings settle after construction and settlement is an accepted factor in most designs. However, the cumulative settlement effect and broader impact of all buildings has not been studied. There is typically a primary settlement phase that occurs shortly after a building is constructed, and then depending on soil type, there can be an indefinite secondary phase of slow creep settlement. To build mass calculations and load distributions on such a large scale, the researchers started with a public database of building base outlines and height data, which was developed by Microsoft. You can use this database yourself from GitHub and it says that Microsoft Maps is releasing countrywide open building footprint datasets in the United States, containing 129 million computer-generated building footprints derived using our computer vision algorithms on satellite imagery. So using this data, the researchers calculate the base area and centroid coordinates of each of the 1 million plus buildings in New York City, then estimating number of floors from the building heights, 
calculating total area by multiplying the base area by the number of floors. Now that the total floor area is found, they find the live and dead load pressures as a function of area. With the weight on top of the crust being found, or the total load, they can then move to the meat of the patty, or the earth's crust, and how much the soil sinks beneath. To do this, they first begin by looking at the surface geology of New York City, which is a complex glacial terrain that has several different units that include silt, sand, clay lake deposits, outwash and till, beach deposits, and bedrock outcrops. The researchers used Comsol Multiphysics, which is a software to build multiple regional soil and bedrock models. From here, they further refined their analysis by modeling localized zones of subsidence. We can begin to partition the response by assigning material properties according to surface geology and associating mapped units with general soil model categories. The paper concludes with an emphasis on the importance of strategies that could minimize the impact of inundation from seawater. However, the authors implicitly argue that New York's developers still aren't taking the risk of rising seawater seriously enough. They also write, urbanization itself may exaggerate the problem. Cumulative pressure applied to the ground from large buildings contributes to subsidence not only from initial primary settlement caused by soil compression, reduction of void space, but also through potential secondary settlement caused by creeping clay-rich layers that can continue indefinitely. Major cities on every continent except Antarctica are observed to be subsiding, and the issue may be worsening as populations grow. Increasing urbanization will likely exacerbate subsidence by groundwater extraction and or construction density, which combined with accelerating sea level rise implies a growing flood hazard in coastal cities. As these trends continue, it will be important to be mindful of accompanying mitigation strategies against inundation in growing coastal cities. With UN reports estimating that the percentage of the world's population living in urban areas could increase to as much as 68% by 2050, coastal cities should take notice of New York's slow sinking. Though it would hardly be prudent to topple every skyscraper and start over, perhaps research like this will inspire ingenious solutions that can help New York rise to the challenge of climate change.